Okay, so the cabling on my native Slayer 10 Propel broke on me. And I've got it set up here in the garage while the family's out. We are going to go ahead and repair it today. And it shouldn't be too difficult. Now, I, I, did, buy, I did buy a replacement kit that would turn it into cord rather than the wire cable. Unfortunately, it's coming directly from native. And I have no idea how long it's going to take for that to get here. Uh, last time I ordered something, it took about two weeks. So I went ahead and ordered uh, some cabling from Amazon. Wasn't really sure what size to get. So I ended up getting this, which is uh, 1.2 millimeter. It's uh, 30 feet. It includes crimps. It'll, you know, the weight uh, is up to 275 pounds of resistance on it. And um, it's 49 strand stainless steel uh, cable and it's coated. And it was about 15 bucks, I want to say, off of Amazon that came here the next day. So we're going to go ahead and put this in. I'm going to keep the cord set up uh, in case I have to do repair out in the water for the up upcoming trail season or next year when I'm competing. So let's go ahead and get this started. Let me show you what I've already done to it. Okay, first things first. I've taken off the steering column here, which is right over here. It's only held in place with four screws, a simple... Uh, Screwdriver or even drill will remove that keep the screws together now There is a really small piece on the inside that holds the cable and pins it right here And you are going to need an allen wrench. I believe it's a 330 second uh, To remove that that's where you're going to crimp the cable and it's going to kind of hold in place so that when you turn this the cable just doesn't slip through so the really small uh, Allen key piece is back inside I put it in there so I wouldn't lose it, but you're gonna need an allen key set to do that Again, it's only held together by four screws, so just keep those together. Simple Phillips head screwdriver or even drill will take care of that. Now the cabling just slides in on two small holes here, but we're gonna feed it through on the other side and then feed it back through. If you're doing this with wire, it's absolutely fine. If you're gonna do it with a cord, I believe it comes with a wire pull through that you're gonna to need to make this happen. So in the back here, you can see I've already taken this out. The rudder's falling off. This pops right out once you unscrew it here. And we have two cable locks here and here with two crimped ends, which we're gonna have to replicate. But this is held together again with that Allen key. So I'm gonna have to use that Allen key to open this up. And then we're gonna feed our cable through one end here, up through, and then back through, come out this end, and then we'll crimp it just like this because the, uh, the cabling kit comes with crimps. Okay, so I've cut the wire and I pulled it through. Um, I wanna make a correction, it is, on these little Allen key screws, it is 5 16ths, not 3 30 seconds. That's what you're gonna need. Uh, so I've already got that cut. Now it's time to get the cable out and run it through, and then uh, we'll get it cut and crimped and back in place. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and run the wire through, and it should follow the guides the whole way up through and come out by the steering column. We'll send this out, and then we'll run it back through, figure out how much we need, get that marked, and then we'll get it through the crimp here. I've loosened this small Allen screw. I've got it out so I can run the cabling through there. Again, you're gonna need a 5 16th, but keep in mind this is for a Slayer Propel 10. Your model might differ. So you might wanna have a couple Allen keys on, on a hand for that. Okay, so I've got to run through. I can't clamp down on it yet. I've got to feed it back through the other hole, which is right here, which will run all the way back to the rudder. And then once I figure out how much room I need, then I can cut it off and I can crimp it from there. And then we'll worry about adjusting the rudder and making sure everything's on there properly. But let's get it fed back through here first. It's fed through on the back end, so that means we're good to go. So up here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clamp down on that Allen key. I'm gonna put this back in and secure it. Not tighten it down just in case I need to get into it. Make sure that this is facing forward and then go ahead and then work on getting the stuff set up on the back end of the kayak here by the rudder. So again, I'm just going to take my Allen key and I'm going to tighten this down so that it holds the cable in place. I'm going to give it a good pinch. I don't want it to go anywhere. I don't want it to slip. don't want to overdo it, but don't want to underdo it either. So it should be okay there. I'm going to go ahead and feed this back through. So I know it's sticking out in that end. Should have plenty of room. Just like 
like that. Make sure it's straight. Back here on this end, I'm going to give it a nice tight tug. There we go. So I've, I've put the screws in by hand. Now I'm going to go ahead and tighten it down just a little bit. I don't want to overdo it in case I got to get back in there, but I don't want this moving around when I'm adjusting on the back end. Still see this is kind of loose, but I want to make sure it's in a, in a, in a straightforward position when I go to line the rudder up. Okay, got my rudder here. I'm just going to slide it up underneath the kayak and get it in the line up to the hole there. And let it sit back down. Make sure that it's nice and flush, that it's straight, and you can see it popping up there. Now I'm going to worry about getting the, the cabling and stuff in on the back portion of this. So these were loosened from before. Again, you need that 5 16 Allen key. I'm going to go ahead and slide the cable up inside these. Just like that. Okay. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and tighten right here so the cable doesn't come out. Same thing on the other side. Okay. Unfortunately, this is a kind of a loop crimp where you kind of put one end through here and then back up through and then crimp it in a loop and my cuts aren't super clean so i'm not going to be able to thread this through here it's going to hold for right now but like i said um i've got plenty of cable so i'll hang on to that if i have to replace it again then i'll do that but we should be good right now this is coated cable it's not going to slip through here this is on pretty tight so our next step is to line up the rudder and our housing unit here There we go. And now that that's in, we're gonna go ahead and screw this down and we should be good to go. So if we move this, it should it move back here. As a side note, you don't wanna tighten down too much on this or it'll put a lot of pressure on the cable and make it harder to turn. But everything works right now and uh, I think we're ready for a test drive. All right, test run. We're doing good. I actually had the kayak out a um, little bit earlier this week and uh, to test it and just forgot the film. But so far we're doing pretty good. Rudder's holding up. There's a little bit of play, which is expected. I mean, I installed it myself, so. Uh, but it feels nice and tight, just like kind of when I first bought it. Cabling's hold up. I put a lot of stress on the handle to try to get it to, to break and stuff. But, you know, besides the little bit of wiggle room which I, I left in it we're doing pretty good and I've got the extra cabling in the front hall just in case I have to replace it on the fly I've got the replacement cabling uh, or the cord rather coming in from native it's gonna be here sometime next week got the tracking number for that so I'll also have that so that I can replace that once this one breaks and then I'll have that and then uh, the extra cabling as backup for when I'm out in the road but so far so good it's holding and uh, so not too bad a job on my part so we're done uh, it took me a couple days to film everything got a lot of stuff going on but it took me about 20 minutes total to replace the cabling kit which is absolutely fine um, anybody can do it I, I did it it's pretty easy now it's not the greatest job but it will work for right now and when I get the chance when it breaks I'm gonna go ahead and replace it with this which is the native cabling kit uh, conversion kit over to cord um, if you're looking for any of these things, I'll put the links in the description, but what I used to replace it initially was this uh, 49 strand stainless steel cord from uh, Catch-All Tackle. It's 275 pound rated, it's 1.2 millimeter, and it's 30 foot. And it includes 10 pieces of 1.6 copper crimps. Now the crimps, had I known that the 
the cutter I was going to use wouldn't actually cut through the cabling really clean, then I probably would have pre-threaded one of the crimps on the end that I needed to cut. So keep that in mind. Otherwise, buy a decent cable cutter. Uh, I had a wire cutter and I had to kind of chomp at it. Kind of embarrassing. So I didn't really show that in the video because it wasn't the, the best cut. So what I'll end up doing now is uh, make sure they have a screwdriver, uh, a cable cutter, and an Allen key set on my kayak at all times. So if I have to replace something, I can. And again, the cable took about 20 minutes. I could probably do it in about 10 now if I'm not fiddling with the camera and I'm trying to, if I'm in a hurry. So I could probably easily do that in about 10 minutes. Now, this conversion kit, this came in about 10 business days, which is what I was, which is what I was afraid of. And, but it does come with a different back unit because the, the cord has to be tied off in a certain way. It comes with a cord and it comes with a stainless steel cable that you'll need or, or a copper cable. It doesn't really matter what it is. It's, it's a wire cable that you can pull this cord through uh, the threading on the kayak with. Um, but this, I think, was $50 because it comes with the unit. But if you're in a pinch, this was, I think, $14. And it came the next day through Amazon. So that's available. I'll put the links in the description if you're interested in that. And when I replace it, again, it, it'll be with the cord. And then I'll keep this in the kayak uh, as a backup in case I need to replace something on the water. So that's it. Pretty simple, easily done. It wasn't really overly complicated. Should take you about 10 to 15 minutes if you have all the right tools and you'll be back out on the water like I was. So I know it's a really basic video, but hopefully it helps you guys out, kind of guides you, kind of gets you out of the mindset that it might be scary to do. You don't need to take this to a shop to have somebody else do it. You can do it right there at home. With that being said, I gotta get ready for the KF event that is coming up in two days uh, that is still on thanks to Etta finally deciding what she wanted to do and moving off coast. So I gotta go get set for that and uh, I'll catch you guys out there.